Marlin, Detective Marlin, sorry, reports that at this point, Henry is extremely calm. He's like, so calm. You'd not say his family's just been brutally axed down. Hello, everybody. My name is Keisha Jackson, and it's Tuesday, which means it's True Crime Tuesday. Every Tuesday, I sit down and I talk about a true South African crime while I do my makeup at the same time. If you like what I do, please give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button because it really helps me. Last week, Tuesday, I spoke about the Fenter family massacre and my mind is still in two different places with it. I can't understand how he could be able to be walking free, but then I also could understand it. But anyway, before I get into this video, I'm going to put a disclaimer out. In this video, I will be describing graphic scenes and horrible, horrible things. So if you are a sensitive viewer, please give this one a skip. But once again, give me a thumbs up. Today, I'm going to be talking about Henry Van Breda. Let's get right into it. Henry was born in 1995 on November 1st. He was born to Therese and Martin Van Breda. He had a older brother by the name of Rudy and a younger sister by the name of Molly. Now, they were, the whole family was born in South Africa and for a short time resided in South Africa and then they had moved to Australia until the kids had finished school and at this time Rudy and Henry were in college so Martin, Therese, Teresa and Molly returned to South Africa but Rudy and Henry stayed in Australia to continue going to college. When they moved back to South Africa, they moved to Stellenbosch and they lived in a very secure golf estate. It's a successful family. It, it was reported that his mom and dad were very, very successful and everyone was very happy. There were no visible family issues. I mean, everyone has their issues. Every single family has their issues, but multiple reports said that there were no serious issues in the family. On the 27th of January of 2015, Henry had made a 911 emergency call and he just said on the call, my family and I have been attacked, can you send help? You know, like the natural... What do you call it? The, the natural reaction to something terrible happening. Now, the way I'm going to explain this story is a little bit different than I have explained stories previously. So just bear with me. Now, Henry claims that in the early hours of the morning, an intruder managed to get into their home and at this time, everyone was asleep except for Henry. Henry was in the bathroom. It's normal, everyone gets... Well, not everyone. Most people get up at night to go to the, the loo. So, this is what Henry claims had happened. And as he was getting out of the bathroom, he saw a very tall... Quote. I saw a very tall... Black man dressed in dark clothes with a baklava over his face. End quote. Now, we are in a secure golf estate in Stellenbosch. There's an intruder in his home. He says that once he spotted the intruder walk past the bathroom towards the bedroom he shared with his brother, he immediately knew something was wrong. And as he walked out of the bathroom, he saw his brother get a Attacked with an axe by this intruder and he said he was standing there in shock like 
What the hell, you know? There's an intruder in my house. What am I going to do? He runs to his dad and wakes his dad up and he says, There's someone in the house. Someone's attacking Rudy. Rudy needs help. So now Martin runs to Rudy's bedroom and Henry follows him closely, like behind. And that's when the intruder attacks Martin. Now you're thinking, because I was thinking the same thing when I heard about this, like, why at that moment, when you saw the intruder, did you not try and get, did you not try and get help before your dad was attacked? Which is my question. We're living in a secure golf estate, guys. Like, is there no way you could have gotten hold of security? That was the first question that popped up in my mind. Allegedly, his mom and his sister wake up hearing all this ruckus. Like, of course you wake up hearing mad ruckus coming from your home. And they run into the bedroom. Henry explains it like he was so shocked that he just turned to stone. Which does happen to many people. And his mom and his sister try to help his father. Like, they try to defend his father. And unfortunately, his mom gets attacked with the axe and so does his sister. At this point, Henry claimed that the intruder then lunged over and tried to attack him multiple times when he was fighting back. He clearly stated that there was a huge struggle between him and the intruder. They were going back and forth and the intruder was trying to hack him and he was leaving marks all over him. And then the intruder grabs a knife and tries to stab Henry but doesn't get that right and he just bolts off. Probably casually walking out of a golf estate, you know, with 24-hour security, surveillance, round-the-clock patrol... Henry stated that at this point he got on the phone to call his current girlfriend, her name was Bianca, and this was at around quarter to five in the morning when he tried to call her but it went unanswered. Yes, it's quarter to five in the morning, dude. Bianca, who was 16 at the time, obviously didn't answer the phone. I wouldn't have either. It's just a strange time for your boyfriend to be calling you. Henry then passed out. He didn't call the police immediately after he had tried to call his girlfriend. He just passed out. Claims are made that Henry passed out because he suffers from epilepsy. All the trauma with this event had triggered his epilepsy and he unfortunately passed out. When he comes to, he makes that 911 call. I heard the 911 call and on the 911 call, I must be very honest with you, I was disappointed eh, in the way this 911 operator was handling this. She was just asking the most, not, I wouldn't say they were unnecessary questions. She was just asking like the craziest things like Henry would say, please help my family's been attacked. Then she would be like, by who? Then Henry would say an intruder. Then she'd be like, your whole family? Then he would say, yes, my whole family, including myself. She was just very slow. Anyway, he makes the call and police arrive on the scene. There are millions of photos guys on google with the crime scene and let me explain it to you because i'm not going to attach any photos of the crime scene i think that's disrespectful the um house was set up in a way that everything that was of materialistic value tvs laptops cell phones handbags money appliances was at the bottom of the house. Only the bedrooms and bathrooms are upstairs. Then you go upstairs and to your right, I think it was, yeah, 
was the bedroom Henry and Rudy shared. And then there was their bathroom. And then on the opposite end were the other bedrooms. That's the layout I saw from the, the documentary I watched. Now, as you're walking up the stairs, there's just blood everywhere. Like, there isn't a single staircase in that house. And like passageway that isn't covered in blood the detective sergeant marlon apollos was the detective to examine and question henry like it, when i say examine to just examine the scene and question him and catch a feel of his demeanor marlon detective marlon sorry reports that at this point henry is extremely calm he's like so calm you'd not say his family's just been brutally axed down he asks a lot of questions as you should like was anything taken from the home is there anyone that doesn't really like your family is there anyone that you don't get along with general questions and the detective had just said that something was very off he felt immediately in his gut that the, something was just not right. So the bed that Rudy was laying in was completely soaked in blood. It was just the mattress was even soaked with so much blood. Fingerprints were taken. The weapon was left behind, by the way. The axe was left behind fingerprints off of the axe was taken and they were doing doing their due work now they went to the security company they explained the circumstances and they said we need to see cctv footage of everyone coming in and out of the gulf estate for that entire day that entire 24 hours of that day we need to see the footage and they view the footage nothing seems out of the ordinary at the point where everyone is investigating henry's sister molly is rushed to hospital because she's still alive and unfortunately his brother his mother and his father passed away molly his sister had survived the attack while the investigation is being conducted and obviously henry's been questioned and interrogated already they cannot blame henry for anything because they have no concrete evidence to pin on him the detective is like no i need to arrest him because there's no cctv footage of anyone going into their house at any point why did it take henry three hours from the point of the attack to the point of the phone call to the 911 operator it's just he the detective said this he knew the minute henry was explaining everything to him that henry had something to do with this Months do go by, quite a few months go by, and Henry enrolls himself in culinary school where he meets his new girlfriend. Ah, uh, uh, look, I don't know what happened to him and Bianca. I'm assuming she was like, uh, this story sounds a bit fishy. I don't want to be involved with you anymore. Whatever. He meets a new girl by the name of Danielle van Rensburg. And I'm saying her full name because, like, listen to how ridiculous this actually is so his entire family have been brutally attacked and murdered by this intruder with an axe when he meets danielle he doesn't tell her anything she says in an interview that he'd never spoken about his family she was just never suspicious about it because he had an australian accent she assumed that he was from Australia and maybe the family was still there. You know, I don't know this chick. He's not speaking about his family to his new girlfriend, Danielle. One day, Danielle comes across an article 
on the news about her boyfriend who she claims is extremely lovable and cries when he sees animals and people being hurt and she says yeah we spoke about it and i 100 percent believe that he's innocent okay it just sounds crazy the trial for the murder of the Van Breda family started on April 4th of 2017. Three years after the murder happened. It's like, it's a bit hectic, okay? But I'm assuming they have to, they have to investigate every plausible option, you know? Even though the detective sergeant was like, you know what, I, I know exactly what happened. I can't tell people or him that I know exactly what happened. Because I have to prove that I think what happened is the truth. Prosecution starts. Prosecution was led by a very... Let me actually find her name. Because she was like a no shit taker chick. The trial was held in the Western Cape High Court. And prosecution was led by prosecution was led by Suzanne or Susan Galloway. She was like all in it. I mean, if I was a state prosecutor, I would be like Susan, Suzanne, Susan. I'm gonna say it in all three ways. She fully believes that he did this to his family, like. She one hundred percent believes that she did this to the family. So she pulls out. All the stops. She's getting a forensic pathologist. She's putting the detectives on the stand. She's putting Henry on the stand. She even goes to the point of where Henry needs to demonstrate what the intruder had done. Now Henry has to um, do a play-by-play -play on his versions of the attack. Which he does do. And very willingly as well. And this just clarifies everything for Susan or Susan. Someone that experienced that much trauma would never remember a play by play on the events that occurred. Anyone that had anything that traumatic would never remember that sort of thing. Like, And you can even go watch the court footage. He did like a choreographed attack. He knew what he was going to do the next moment he did it. It was just crazy. The next thing was that Henry had scarring and scratches on his body. The marks and scars were known to be very superficial. They were very surface, barely any blood. Now, Susan, the state prosecutor, is like, I want to bring my forensic pathologist to the stand because she examined... Henry's scarring, Henry's clothes, Henry's blood. Everything was examined by Dr. Marion Hemsa. I hope I'm saying his name right. We're going to call her Dr. Marion. Also like a super esteemed forensic pathologist. So her opinions are very trusted in court. So Dr. Marion comes back and she says that Upon extensive examination of Henry Van Breda's physical harm, I have come to the conclusion that these scratches are self-inflicted. He did it to himself. Remember Henry's girlfriend, Danielle? Yeah, she still claims he's innocent, eh? Then um, state prosecutor Susan asks about... His clothing, because Henry's clothing had blood splatter on it, like, all over. Now, if you remember correctly, he said while he was standing in the bathroom, he saw his brother get attacked. While he was standing in the bathroom entrance, he saw his father and his sister and his mother getting attacked. There is no way that if I'm standing in my bathroom... And someone is attacking my husband in my bedroom. I would get blood stains that close. They said it was just too much blood in one area. It was just not looking good for Henry. 
Upon extensively examining all the evidence in both cases, the presiding judge is ready to give his verdict. I wish we'd have a jury. I would sign up to do jury duty every day. Hey? Like I would be in the jury every single case. Now you're wondering, oh, Keisha, but you said that, um, that Henry's sister survived. Yeah, she survived. Unfortunately, she has absolutely no memory of this traumatic event that had happened to her because she suffers from severe head injuries from being hit with an axe on her head several times. My point was that, unfortunately, Molly could not testify because she could not remember. She is the only person that knows exactly who did this. It's so scary. It's time for closing arguments. Okay, let me just say this. They were claiming innocence. They are saying that there was definitely an intruder. You need to understand that these things happen so commonly in South Africa. And first of all, I just want to mention the fact that I personally think defense was absolutely disgusting in standing by the, the claim that it was a black man coming into their property and harming their family. I know that there are many crimes like this committed, but I just think race is not the greatest thing to bring into it. Prosecution decides to do their closing statement. What Susan is saying happened was Henry and Rudy got into a argument about a long-standing family issue and Henry had just gotten so aggravated that he committed this crime in this way. His father then came in and saw and instead of him saying it was a moment of rage I'm so sorry, he kills his father, and then that same thing happens, and then he kills his mom, same thing, and he harms his sister. I personally believe this fully, and I'm standing by my word that I believe that he committed these crimes. We don't know why. 7th of June, 2018, in the Western Cape High Court, Henry von Breda gets sentenced to three life sentences to be served concurrently now like last week when you are sentenced to serve concurrently you are eligible for parole at the half point of your sentence now because Henry was sentenced to three life sentences running concurrently to be served at Drakenstein's correctional facility Henry is eligible for parole in 25 years. The girlfriend still is in communication with him. Like they send each other letters. They are loving on each other. She says that their relationship is going to continue because she stands by the fact that Henry could never do anything so violent. Now he has not confessed to to the murder of his family so he is uh, allegedly guilty his aunt who is his mom's sister also says that whether henry committed these crimes or didn't she is still going to stand by and emotionally support him this i thought was bad because that's your sister your brother-in-law your niece who is currently living with her Molly is staying with Teresa's sister so look I know you have to support your family and I get all of that but I mean there's no room there is absolutely no room that he didn't have anything to do with it the forensic pathologist even said that Henry must have been the luckiest man alive if he had no bruising or scarring due to the massive struggle he claimed he was in with the intruder. I don't think his aunt wants to believe that he did it. Once again, to this day, there is no footage of an intruder. There is no cir circumstantial evidence that there was an intruder. There were no fingerprints of an intruder. There were no footprints, no DNA. Nothing like that was left over. On Henry, 
or the home that there was an intruder in it. The 7th of November 2018, Henry, Henry decided to appeal his case once again. It got dismissed and no one's ever heard of it again. It's disgusting. I'm so upset. I knew this happened. I was following the story when it came out. And it just it never made sense to me. Honestly, it just never, ever made sense that this could have happened. Especially, and I don't want to sound like I'm stereotyping Stellenbosch, but a secure estate in one country, Stellenbosch. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's story. Please, please let me know what you think down below. I want to know if you thought that he did it. I want to know if you think there's a possibility of an intruder. My personal opinion is there was no intruder. Just saying. Also, please remember to stay safe. Wear your mask. Sanitize and wash your hands. And adhere to social distancing. I hope to see you next week, Tuesday. And I hope you have a great week and good things coming to you. Bye.